Morphology of flowering plants. Morphology. Morphology is a branch of biology which deals with the study of form and structure. Parts of a flowering plant. A flowering plant has a long cylindrical axis which is differentiated into an underground root system and an aerial shoot system. The shoot system has stem, branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. Morphology of a root. Root is a non-green underground descending positively geotrophic portion of a plant developing from the radical of the embryo. Regions of root. A typical root shows the following regions. Root cap, meristematic zone, zone of elongation, root hair zone and maturation zone. Functions of roots. Anchorage, absorption, conduction of water and minerals and transport of nutrients. Types of root system. Tap root system. A root developing from a radical is called as a tap root. The first formed root is called as a primary root and its branches are known as secondary and tertiary roots. Adventitious roots. The root developing from a point other than the radical is called as adventitious root. Modifications of root. The structural and functional changes in the roots to perform a special function according to the need of the plant is called as modification of roots. Modification for storage. Conical root. Example, carrot. Fusiform root. Example, radish. Napiform root. Example, beetroot. Modifications for mechanical support. Epiphytic roots. The plant which grows upon another plant for support is called as an epiphytic plant. Example, Vanda. Stilt roots. These are fibrous roots developing from some of the basal nodes for additional support. Example, maize and sugarcane. Modifications for physiological functions. Pneumatophores or breathing roots. Example, Avicennia, Sonoracea and Rhizophora. Parasitic roots. The plants may be total parasite like Cascuta or partial parasite like Loranthus. The plant produces peg-like roots inside the host stem and derives nutrition. Such roots are known as hostoria. Morphology of stem. Stem is the ascending axis of the plant and develops from the plumule and epicotyle of the embryo. It is negatively geotrophic and positively phototrophic. It bears distinct nodes and internodes. Bud. Bud can be defined as a young, underdeveloped shoot consisting of a shoot apex, compressed axis and a number of tender leaves arching over the growing apex. Modifications of stem Underground modifications Rhizome The rhizome is a perennial stem of the plant which grows below the soil surface and bears nodes and internodes. It is usually fleshy due to food storage. Example, ginger. Tuber. It is very different, swollen at ends due to storage of food. Example, potato. Bulb. The plant producing bulb has a small, modified, extremely reduced, disc-like underground stem. The internodes are highly compressed. The nodes bear fleshy scales. The bulb is of two types. Tunicated bulb, example onion, and scaly or naked bulb, Example, garlic. Corm. It is an enlarged, more or less round, solid, fleshy underground stem with few nodes and internodes. Example, amorphophallus. Subaerial modifications. Plants having weak, delicate stems are unable to stand and grow erect. The stems of such plants show following modifications. Runner. These are narrow modified branches which develop from axillary buds of the lowest leaves. They creep for some distance away from the mother plant. 
Each runner shows one to many nodes. The runner helps in vegetative propagation. For example, doob grass or lawn grass. Stolon. It is a special kind of a runner. They first grow obliquely upwards to some distance and then bend towards the ground and come in contact with soil. Example, fern, mentha piperata. Aerial modifications, stem tendril. As the stem is not able to stand erect, some axillary buds instead of developing into branches produce spring-like structures called as tendrils. Tendrils are thin, elongated, cylindrical, coiled, green structures. Tendrils may develop from extra auxiliary or apical bud. Example, Cucurbita passiflora. Thorn. In xerophytic plants, some axillary branches are modified into hard, shapely, pointed structures called as thorns. They are deep-seated and have a vascular connection with the stem. Example, Citrus, Duranta, Bougainvillea. Phyloclade. In some xerophytic plants, the leaves are highly reduced to spines or fall off early to check the rate of transpiration. In such plants, the function of leaves is performed by the stem, which gets modified into a flattened green structure called as phyloclade. Example, Opontia. Cladode. The cladode is a modification of stem and branches of limited growth. Phyloclade with one or two internodes is called as a cladode. Example, Asparagus racemosus. In asparagus, cladodes are needle-like, slightly flattened green structures which appear in clusters at the axil of the leaf. Bulbil. When the axillary bud becomes large and fleshy due to storage of food, it is known as a bulbil. Example, Dioscoria. Morphology of a leaf. A leaf is a green, flat, thin, expanded, lateral appendage of the stem. It is born at the node and bears a bud in its axil. It is exogenous in origin and develops from leaf primordium of the growing apex. Growth of the leaf is limited. Parts of a leaf. A typical leaf has following parts. Leaf base, petiole, leaf blade or lamina. Leaf base or hypopodium. It is the basal part by which the leaf is attached to the stem. In many parts, the base is provided with small outgrowths called stipules. Petiole or stalk, mesopodium. It is long or short cylindrical part which joins the lamina to the base. The petiole pushes the lamina away from the stem to get optimum sunlight. Lamina, leaf blade or epipodium. Lamina is a flat, thin, green, expanded portion of the leaf and constitutes the major part of the leaf. Types of leaves Simple leaf When the lamina is entire or undivided or may be incised to some depth but not up to the midrib or the petiole is known as a simple leaf. Example, mango and cotton. Compound leaf When the incision of the leaf blade goes up to the midrib or the petiole so that the leaf is broken into a number of segments called leaflets is called as a compound leaf. Example, rose, gulmohar, moringa. Modifications of a leaf. Leaf tendril. In some plants, the leaf is modified into a slender, wiry, often coiled spring-like structure called tendril. These are of following types. Whole leaf tendril. When the entire leaf is modified into a tendril, then it is a whole leaf tendril. For example, wild pea, Lantharus afeca, apex tendril. In this case, only the apex of the leaf is modified into a tendril. For example, Gloriosa superba, glory lily. Leaflet tendril. In P, that is Pisum sativum, the upper leaflets or compound leaf are modified into tendrils. Petiolar tendrils. In clematis, the petiole is modified into a tendril. Stipular tendril. In smilax, stipules are modified into tendrils. Leaf spine. In some plants, the leaves or their parts are modified into small, hard, sharp, 
pointed structures called as spines. The bud present in the axil of a spine indicates that the spine is a leaf. In Opuntia, leaves are modified into spines. In Argimon, margin of the leaf is modified into spines. In Zyzephus or Acacia, the stipules are modified into spines. Leaf hooks. In Bignonia Angius cati, the terminal leaflet becomes modified into three sharp, stiff and curved hooks, which resemble cat's nails. Phyllode. A flat green leaf like modification of a petiole is known as a phyllode. Example Australian acacia. Functions of leaf Photosynthesis, exchange of gases, transpiration, protection of bud, and conduction. Inflorescence The mode of arrangement of flowers on the floral axis is called as inflorescence. Types of inflorescence Racemos or indefinite. When the floral axis is not terminated by a flower and grows indefinitely and produces flowers laterally, it is called as a racemose inflorescence. And in this type, the flowers are arranged in an acropetal succession. That is, the oldest flower is at the base and the youngest is near the apex. Example, Caesalpinia gulmohar. Cyanose or definite. In this type, the floral axis is terminated by a flower and hence growth is limited. The oldest flower is at the apex and the youngest is at the base, that is, basi petal succession. Example, jasmine and hibiscus. Flower. Flower is defined as a highly modified and condensed shoot with limited growth and is specialized for sexual reproduction in higher plants. Parts of a typical flower. Pedicle or stalk. Thalamus. Floral whorls. The floral whorls are of two types, accessory whorls and essential whorls. The accessory whorls are of two types, calyx and corolla. The essential whorls are of two types, androsium and gynaecium. Calyx. The outermost whorl individual member is called sepal, generally green in color and protects the flower in bud condition. Corolla. Second accessory whorl, inner to calyx, individual member is called petal. Petals are brightly colored and attract insect for pollination. Androsium. First essential whorl, individual member is called a stamen, which produces pollen grains and is considered as a male part of the flower. Gynaecium. Second essential whorl, individual member is known as a carpel. It is considered as the female part of the flower. Fruits. Fruit is defined as a mature and a ripened ovary with or without one or more seeds. Types of fruits. True fruits. The fruit developed exclusively from the ovary of a flower is called a true fruit. False fruit. The fruits derived from ovary along with the accessory floral parts such as thalamus, receptacle, calyx, etc. are known as false fruits. Example, apple and cashew nut. Classification of fruits. Fruits are mainly grouped under three types. Simple fruit. It develops from a single flower with monocarpillary or polycarpillary syncarpus gynaecium of a single flower. Example, mango. Aggregate fruits. The fruit which develops from a single flower with polycarpillary apocarpus gynaecium is called aggregate fruit or itarios. Example, custard apple. Composite fruits. The fruit which develops from many flowers or from the complete inflorescence is called a composite fruit. Example, pineapple and jackfruit. Seeds. The seed is a ripened and a fertilized ovule which has undergone all the required post-fertilization changes. The seeds are of two types, dicotyledonous seed and monocotyledonous seed. Tissues. The term tissue was coined by Nehemiah Grew in 1682. A group of cell having a common origin and performing a similar function is called a tissue. The tissues are grouped into two types, meristematic and permanent. Meristematic tissue. 
It is defined as a group of cells which has power of continuous division or which remain in a continuous state of division. The term meristem was coined by C. Nageli in 1858. Classification of meristems on the basis of origin. Pro meristem, primary meristem, secondary meristem. On the basis of plane of division, rib meristem, plate meristem and mass meristem. On the basis of position, apical, intercalary and lateral. Permanent tissues. The permanent tissue is composed of a group of cells which are mature, fully grown and have a permanent size, shape and function. They are classified as simple tissues and complex tissues. Simple tissue. Simple tissues are made up of permanent cells which are similar in structure, origin and perform a same function. Simple tissues are of three types. Parenchyma, Colenchyma and Sclerenchyma. Complex tissues. When the permanent tissue is composed of more than one type of cells having common origin and working together as a unit is called a complex tissue. The complex tissues are xylem and phloem. Xylem. It is made up of four types of cells. Tracheids, vessels, xylem sclerenchyma and xylem parenchyma. Phloem or bast or leptome. It is the chief food conducting tissue. It consists of sieve elements, companion cells, phloem parenchyma and phloem sclerenchyma.